I love that. I love that song. I haven't heard that song for a long time. Thanks for doing that. That's an awesome, it's on the list. It's, that's such a great song. Um, Jesus, come to my rescue. I was doing a word study a while ago, and I learned that the word redeemer that we use a lot means kinsman warrior. So Jesus is this big brother who comes with all the weapons of war to our rescue. That is such a beautiful picture. You can go ahead and bring the first slide up for Freedom Sunday. Um, so within the context of worship, we're having this conversation, and it's a hard conversation in some ways, and I really need about eight hours, so we're gonna just go until the meeting tonight. There's a meeting here at six o'clock, so we might have to bump that back a little bit. I'm just, I'm joking, I'm joking. I, I want you to know a few things right at the very beginning. Um, Thank you for being part of a continuing conversation because uh, the first thing I wanna say to you, Spring Arbor Free Methodist Church, some of you are young and maybe you don't know this, but nine years ago, this was the first place I preached. And out of that experience, a movement was born that has become this movement called the Set Free Movement. And you have been in this movement from the beginning. So thank you. Spring Arbor Free Methodist Church for praying, for giving, for volunteering your time, for kicking against the darkness till it bleeds daylight. Thank you for, for being part of this. You've got a great team that's here, and they're, 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 they're part of a movement that's, that's all around the globe. So that's the first thing I want to say is thank you. The other thing I want to say as we begin is that this is a dark, desperate, despairing, difficult subject, but this is a message of hope. This is a message of hope. Because as I've been driving around in Michigan over the last couple days, I just stop my car and I look out the window and I just, I just break into worship because God is changing the colors of the trees. And there are pumpkins and, and cornfields and God created this beautiful world and Jesus died and, and was risen from the dead so there's nothing God cannot do, right? There's nothing God cannot do. So when we look at di dark, desperate, difficult subjects, we do it within a context of hope. We're a people of hope, on journey with God, following him into the darkness with light, hope, and healing. In our world today, there are at least 40 million slaves. These are people who cannot walk away. They're under the threat of, dark, of, of, of violence. They're doing things they don't wanna do. Th these are not people making $1 a day and going home. These are people that cannot go away. They cannot stop what they're doing. And it's a $150 billion a year business. So yes, it's about the breakdown of the moral fabric of society. Yes, it's about laws and law enforcement, and rescue, restoration, awareness, all those things. But it is a big criminal money-making business that we contribute to through our consumerism, the products that we buy and use. This is why this is a long conversation. This is why I need eight hours just to unpack all of that. But we don't have that time. This is a big global epidemic. But it's not just over there in places like Thailand or Bulgaria, it's also right here in the United States. So according to some statistics, there are between 100,000 to 300,000 domestic minor sex trafficking victims in the United States. Domestic meaning they're US citizens, minors, they're under the age of 18, they're involved in commercial sexual exploitation. But if we add to that number, those that are involved in labor trafficking and those who are over the age of 18, are there a million slaves in the United States? A million and a half, two million? Slavery exists in our cupboards, our closets, our kitchens. It's across the street, it's around the corner, and it's on the other side of the world. It's involved in, it's in all sorts of different things. It's in domestic labor, commercial sex, restaurants and hospitality, factories and manufacturing, construction and landscaping, agriculture and forestry. Now, when you, when you look at, when you think about numbers, okay, 300,000, 40 million, every, every one of those numbers represents a human being. Somebody's father, mother, uncle, aunt, cousin, son, daughter, created in the image of God, being used against their will for profit or pleasure. And the real question is this, how much is she worth? How much is he worth? What is his value? 
What is her value? Is she worth more than a chocolate bar? Is he worth more than a t-shirt? That is the real question. And the answer is that they are beyond value. You cannot put a price tag on these people. Created in the image of God with dignity and value. And it is not just wrong, it is evil to use a human being for profit or pleasure. And so we as God's people, we stand up and we say, no, no, stop it. We're going to change our value systems. We're gonna change how we, how we view people. We're gonna change how we spend money because this is wrong and it's against the mission of God. It's against everything that God is for. Are you with me? So then we have to back up and start asking some other questions. Well, what creates vulnerability to begin with? And really, it's any injustice we can name, poverty, racism, gender inequality, domestic violence in the home, on and on and on. We can talk about all sorts of injustices. And those things create a vulnerability whereby somebody could become trafficked. And the other question is, is this a problem or a symptom? And the answer to that question will determine our approach. And we've, we've come to believe after years of working and years of experience and, and learning and exploration, we've come to believe that human trafficking is a symptom. It is not the problem. There's something underneath that is creating all sorts of issues, and out of that are coming things like racism. Out of that are coming things like gender inequality. Out of that are coming things like human trafficking. And what is it? It's brokenness. Our world is terribly broken, and our relationships are broken between us and God and us and each other, between men and women, between uh, different races, between Republican and Democrat, between the rich and the poor. There's just this brokenness that then becomes community brokenness and then becomes reinforced by broken systems, and then eventually the whole culture becomes broken. That's the real problem, is brokenness. And so we in the Set Free Movement, we believe that we must do two things. We must both serve with compassion at the margins, which is addressing the symptoms, and work to bring hope and healing in broken communities, because that addresses the real problem. So that's why we create community teams. And we now have about 30, 35, 40 community teams around the world. We're on three continents right now. Next year, we'll be on four continents. And one of the most amazing teams is right here. You guys have an amazing team. But I want you to meet some other, uh, this, is our, this is our mission statement. The Set Free Movement seeks holistic freedom in order to create new futures and end modern slavery through community-based action in partnership with others. So we're all about holistic freedom, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. We want to create new futures. We want to end modern slavery. But we do it through community, and we do it in partnership with others. And so here's some of our leaders. This is Jeff on the lower left. Jeff is running a coffee shop in DeKalb, Illinois. He's using business as a tool to address the problem. And in the process, he's having conversations in the community, and eventually he's going to plant a church. Now, I'm from Seattle, and I'm all over that. Church in a coffee shop? Amen. Who's with me? Who's with me? And then this is Hallie on the upper left and Brandon. Hallie is our youngest leader. She's now 16, but when she was a freshman on her very first day, she went into her high school and she found a teacher to be an advisor and started a set free club. As a freshman on her first day, like she should be scared to death, but instead with boldness she goes, she finds a teacher, she starts a club. I thought that was pretty cool and then I was invited to come and speak at the high school, a high school of 4,000 students. And my colleague Felicia and I spent eight hours doing assemblies. It was one of the longest, hardest days of my life but we talked to about 2,000 students that day, and I learned it was the first time that anybody had addressed human trafficking in that high school. And there had just been a bust at a hotel across the street from the hotel where I was staying where a trafficker was arrested and some young girls were set free. A 15-year-old girl with boldness 
She didn't say, well, I don't have it all figured out yet. I don't have any money. I'm young. What can I do? No, she said, I'm going to do something. And so she stepped forward, and she did something. Then this is Brenda and Liz on the upper right, and they're in Portugal. We've got a new team launching in Portugal, another one launching in Spain. It's very exciting. And then this is Heidi in Wenatchee. So we've got, we've got all these teams kind of spread out around the United States and around the world. And I want the team members that are here. I see Amber right here. But who else is part of Set Free Spring Arbor? If you're here, stand up. There's somebody way in the back. Oh, there's a bunch of people in the back. Thank you for stepping forward. I encourage you to come back tonight. I encourage you to go to the lunch next week. I encourage you to get involved. I can't even tell you. Uh, yesterday I met with Amber for a couple hours, and my mind was blown. Like God's doing something here, but it's going to take all of us pulling on the same side of the rope together to make things happen. There's one other person here. Diane, where are you? Diane, uh, Diane Castle, can you stand up? Diane is our team leader. And so she oversees all of our teams in the U.S., and she's, she lives here in Michigan about an hour and a half from here, right? Yeah. So this is Diane. She knows everything about every team, so grill her after church this morning. I don't know what it is about Michigan. Michiganders are kicking it. You guys are awesome. So I want you to turn to Psalm 10. Um, so... Turn to your Bible or to your phone or to your iPad. This is a prayer, and it begins with a complaint, and then it, 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 it goes into a statement of reality. And this is a prayer, and we're in the context of worship. We're in the context of talking about a, a, some troubling social issues, and this psalm directly relates to it. So Psalm 10, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. He swears no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near villages. From ambush he murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. The helpless He he catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Wow. The Bible is alive. I have read this psalm thousands of times, but when I read this recently, I thought, oh my goodness, this is talking about a human trafficker. This is talking about the very people that we're just now thinking about. These people who, who, who capture and abuse and use and, and perpetuate evil on the innocent. But then, verse 12, Arise, Lord. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness that would not otherwise be found out. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed so that, no, so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. And this is our cry this morning. We cry to God. Arise, Lord. Arise. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. This is our cry this morning. And when you pray to God, you need to expect that he's going to use you to answer that prayer. 
That's a really important thing for us to realize. When we ask God to do something, God uses us to do it. Now, I I, want to point out some words, if you can see this, the words in yellow. I lived in Thailand for seven years, and I've been in and out of Asia for 20, and there are idols everywhere, and people are praying to idols, but idols do not see, idols do not hear, idols do not speak, idols do not act. But our God, our God sees, our God considers, our God is the helper of the fatherless. Our God even breaks the arms of wicked men. Amen. Like we need God to come to our deliverance. We need God to deliver 40 million slaves from bondage. But let's not be deceived. It's not the bad people out there and we're the good people in here. We're also guilty. We're also guilty. We do not want God to come against us because of our values because of our worldview, because of how we spend money, because of how I think about somebody who is younger, female, poor. Sin destroys us in every way, and sin destroys community. And God will not stand idly by and let us destroy ourselves and destroy the community, or he will not stand idly by and let others destroy our community. So this is a time for reflection, a time to search our hearts. God hears, God encourages, God listens. He's the defender. Amen. This is our God. This is our God. And so when we leave here in a few minutes, we're going to go out that door and God is going to lead us into places of joy, and he's going to lead us into the dark places with the light, and he's going to lead us to people who need help, hope, and healing. Now, there's a lot of things that we can talk about, but I want to just tell you what we're going into, what we're moving into. I've been going back and forth to Cambodia for about 20 years, and we're now partnering with International Child Care Ministries to create an educational program that's going to help Uh, to educate villages, churches, hostels, families about the dangers of human trafficking, and also to speak into the lives of young people and say, you're valuable. Don't let somebody trick you. Don't let somebody use you. Now, ICCM, International Child Care Ministries, has been doing a program in India for several years where they've gone into thousands of villages, thousands of schools, thousands of hostels, and get this, statistically, they have shut down human trafficking in that part of India. And we wanna do it more in India. We wanna expand that program in India, and we wanna do it in Cambodia, and Philippines, and Thailand, and on and on around the globe. So that's one of the things we're doing. The other thing that we're doing is we're creating a scholarship fund for young people who can't, on their own, get, a, get an education that will lead them to a justice position, like a social worker or a lawyer that's going to defend the rights of the poor. So I was in India and I met this girl named Teresa. I was speaking to a group of girls and I was encouraging them to stay in school because girls often get married when they're 13, 14, 15, 16. And this one girl stood up, asked me a question, and I answered it, and she stood up and asked me another question, and I answered it, and I turned to my translator and I said, this girl could be the prime minister. And he said, actually, she wants to be a lawyer. But there are no women lawyers in India, and she's lower class. There are no lower class women lawyers in India. I want Teresa to be the first one. I want her to be the first one. And we did the math and we figured out that for $30,000 we could send her through seven years of school so she could become the first lower class woman lawyer of India defending the rights of women and children. So we're doing it. So we've created this, we're creating the scholarship fund and we want to help Trujisa and others like her to pursue an education so that we can address this problem from within the system. Now, uh, in, uh, in 2019, we're sending a new missionary, a new free Methodist world missionary named Ashley Carroll. She's 24 years old 
and she's going to Kenya. And she's been in Kenya a couple of times before. She feels like God's calling her to that. And she's going to be coming alongside Kenyan women. And I like this picture because she's standing in back and beside this Kenyan woman. Ashley is not going to lead. Ashley is going to be a support system to help these Kenyan women address gender-based violence. About 39% of Kenyan women experience gender-based violence. Now that's the, the statistics, but you know it's underreported. So it's probably more like 60 or 70%. So we've got to address that. So Ashley is going to go forward and address that. These are ordinary people just following God into the darkness. That's what Amber is. Amber's an ordinary person following God into the darkness. I'm an ordinary person following God into the darkness. But God's leading. And the question is, what about you? What about you? you? Are you willing to follow God across the street, around the corner, and to the other side of the world? Now, your church has been so generous in your giving over the years. You've been generous in your praying. You've been generous in all sorts of support. But if, if, if you're hearing me speak this morning and you've got deep pockets or you're, you haven't been giving, I want to I wanna just invite you to give big, give strong to your church. Give to the missions program. Because all the missionaries you support are all indirectly or directly working with me and Amber and others to address human trafficking. And your church is really gearing up to do something significant in your area. And I can't talk about it because I don't live here. And Amber's not ready to talk about it. Maybe she'll talk about it a little bit tonight. If you want to become a monthly giver, we would love to have you give $10 a month, $20 a month, $100 a month, $1,000 a month. Because we need to double our budget in the next couple years. Because the needs are enormous and we're just expanding so rapidly. You can find out more on our website. You can come back to our table. We've got t-shirts for sale. We've got prayer cards. We've got all sorts of ways you can connect with us and connect with the team here as well. And I want to close with Psalm 146. This is another great prayer. So turn to that and let's prayerfully read what it says here. And then I'll, I'll pray and then we'll wrap up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. And we do praise you this morning, Lord. We thank you that we are in a place of safety, that there's heat and electricity, that we've had something to eat today, we've had clean water to drink. We're thankful, Jesus, that you died on a cross to save us. You rose again to bring us life and life abundantly. And we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. Turn us. Turn us, and Jesus, we will follow you out these doors into the brokenness with joy. We will follow you like the song that we sang this morning. We will be dancers who dance upon injustice. And that river, that river of justice, we want to be, be in boats going down that river following you and inviting people on the shore to jump in the boat. Come on, we're on a journey with God. This is great, and we're moving to a place of abundance and healing and hope and joy and peace. Jesus, take us there. Take us there, and we'll worship you as we go. Amen.